The term socialism is often used as a pejorative. It is. And uh, even in making the show, certain opinions like I've held or certain discussion I've had, they're like, oh, you're just a lefty or you're just a socialist or you're basically a commie. It basically just goes, even in the idea, I like the NHS, you're basically a commie. <laughs> you know, we always think to that. But whenever you actually ask somebody who is socialist or understands socialism, they always talk about it's about the owning of the means of production. Yeah. So what would you say to people who are very anti-socialist? Like, firstly, do you think they have the definition wrong? Do they misunderstand it? Or do they have to just have a fair opinion that's different from yours? Um, usually they misunderstand it. Um, so usually it's something like um, they think socialism means having a government who is going to redistribute wealth in order to try and make everybody have equal outcomes. I have never seen any socialist, any self-identified socialist advocating for that. The only people I've seen advocating for that are, you know, high school students who haven't learned enough about the world to realize how bad of an idea it is. Um, and perhaps the US Democrat Party sometimes, but I also, like I said, you know, they're not socialist, not at all. Um, so, yeah, I think it's mostly just a misunderstanding of what the term means. Um, then you've got the problems of things like, you know, the USSR the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Oh, clearly that must be a socialist society. Okay, did the workers own the means of production in the USSR? No, they did not. Simple, I, I, you know, I, I know people are going to say, oh, you know, pull up the memes, that wasn't real socialism. Yeah, but it simply wasn't. The workers did not own the means, means of production. That is not socialism. So it's basically <laughs> people are confusing means of production with uh, taxation and redistribution. Yeah. And that's... A useless. Well, do you, but but can we can words over time be redefined? Because I feel like that's what people think socialism yeah. is. Socialism is uh, collectivism. Yeah. So linguistics is one of my hobbies, and yes, words change meaning over time. They do, and perhaps what, you know, eventually we're going to have to give up on the word socialism. But the problem is, there are so many books about socialism written over hundreds of years now, and or well, a hundred and a bit years um, about socialism, and. They're all talking about the thing that I'm talking about. They're not talking about redistribution of wealth. So, you know, if you pick up a book about socialism, it's talking about the things that I'm talking about now. It's not talking about, um, you know, taking money and distributing it out to people. So the new definition simply doesn't match what you're going to pick up and read in a book. So I prefer to stick with the term as long as possible because it just, it, it should avoid confusion rather than cause it. What do you think are fair criticisms of socialism? So that's difficult because socialism is such a broad thing. I think there are fear. Where, where might you socialists argue? Yeah. So definitely on how much state is necessary. Um, you know, there are people who I would define as state socialists, and I think it's a ridiculous idea because state socialism essentially is saying we have representatives, they are the government, and the workers own the means of production, but we're giving that to the government to do on our behalf because they are our representatives. To me, that's just a concentration of power in the government and it very quickly devolves into essentially authoritarianism because you've now given the government control of every major company and corporation and so on. It's it, That's a really bad thing to do. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. like a Saudi. Yeah. Concentrating is, is, is it even in China? Like you're part, every company is partly owned by the government. Yeah, and that's that's state socialism. That's exactly right. what state socialism is and you know, I'm very strongly against that. Um, yeah. So those are the kinds of things socialists argue about. We also, of course, definitely argue about things like, you know, um, how much personal property is personal property. You know, you own this house, you're living in this house potentially, and, you know, that's clearly your house. But what about the fact that you own this house and you own another house somewhere else? At what point is that no longer personal property? There's, it really becomes a gray area, and that's what socialists will argue about. They'll say, you know, okay, the house you're living in is clearly yours, that's personal property, but that other house that you own and you're um, not using at all is not, but this third house that you own and you're using it as your summer home, that is yours because it's a personal property. You know, every summer you go there and you, you know, live in it for a short time. But that's, you know, it How really is... How do you is, protect property rights then in that scenario? Yeah, I don't know. And that's that's why it's this point where people argue about things. And, you know, I don't claim to have the answer there either. I, I, if somebody asks me, is your summer home personal property or private property? My answer is going to be probably, I don't know. Let's, you know, get together and figure it out collectively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you bring up some interesting points. But I think people 
people sometimes just want structure and definition. Yeah. They want to understand where they are, where they are with certain things. I think you advocate for some things that are interesting. I think the John Lewis model is 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 cool. I know people who work for John Lewis, they like it. When John Lewis has a successful year, all the staff get a bonus. Mm-hmm. I think that is great. We don't have that with the podcast. It is mine. Danny sure. can't have shit. <laughs> no, but 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 we but no, we do. We share yeah. the benefits of the podcast out. Mm-hmm. Um I think but I think getting to I, I don't see a libertarian socialist society as something that will ever happen. But what I do think is the th- ideas that you have can influence society and maybe change it for the better. P- maybe yep. someone will listen and go, you know, maybe after this I'll turn around and go, do you know what? I should share, share the means of production with that. I'm not. But maybe <laughs> I'll think like that. No, fuck you, Danny. It, in a lot of ways, that's actually kind of the goal. It's like... Yeah. Um, no, but no, maybe I yeah. will. Like, it's generally on my mind yeah. now. I mean, I look at it a lot like um, you could say the goal of science is to know absolutely everything. We will never know absolutely everything. The, what science does is makes you get less wrong with every answer. Every time we discover something new, we are less wrong about the way the universe works. That's what science is. But you could say science has the goal of knowing everything, and we're never going to reach it. Libertarian socialism, I'd say, could be the same sort of thing. There is no perfect libertarian socialist society, and there never will be but we can get steps closer to it and continue hmm. to get more libertarian socialist. How niche are you as a Bitcoiner? Uh, relatively niche. I definitely know there are, you know, there's a few progressives who strongly agree with me on a lot of things, not everything. Um, I do know a few other um, classical anarchists who I would say I agree with on, you know, 99% of stuff. Um, you know, there's always not everything, but, uh, you know, people like Ben Ark, um, uh, there's this... I love uh, Ben. Yep. Um, this uh, nice um, German girl, Louisa. Um, I think she's in Berlin, but yeah. Um, so you know, there's a few, there's a few, there's a few classical anarchists who are Bitcoiners, and you know, I would say I agree with them on a lot of stuff. We're seeing more yeah. progressives coming into Bitcoin now. Definitely, we've yeah. um, we're making a bit of an effort over the next uh, couple of months to uh, speak to more of them on the podcast. And the reason we want to do that is that I think uh, as Bitcoin grows and becomes. Uh, become more widespread in society, more adopted, it's naturally going to be uh, adopted by people who may be from the left as well. And one of the things I've been trying to say to people is, you like, if you're from the right, you should love the fact that people from the left are coming into Bitcoin. And you should yeah. want them to come into Bitcoin. And you should disagree with them as much as you want, but celebrate the fact that they're coming in because you know, they're doing two things. They're going to defend Bitcoin to the FUD spreaders from the yep. left and they're also going to bring their left friends in. And this is the one area we don't want to fight on. You can fight on you know, BIPs and tech and shit coins versus Bitcoin, all of that. But I think we all agree that Bitcoin is good for everyone. Yep. So like, I think we should be celebrating these people coming in and supporting them and helping them understand Bitcoin and, and civilly dealing with our disagreements. And, and, and I'm, a big, I'm a big advocate of that. Absolutely. Um, you know, if it were the other way around, I would welcome the right into Bitcoin. You know, if Bitcoin were majority left, and you know, I was like the mainstream opinion. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. If I were, um, you know, I would welcome the right. I would still strongly disagree with them on you know the left versus right issues, but I would welcome them into Bitcoin because uh, you know it, it's only positive to have more more people with more different views. How do you find it at the moment, with Bitcoin? Because it is very tetchy. We're almost having a weekly. Like uh, nail someone to the cross and have it. It was Matt yeah. Corallo yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't agree with Matt on you know, yeah uh, old coins or whatever. I think the guy's awesome and I love what he's done for Bitcoin and he's brilliant. And, yeah. It, and yeah. I'm not saying he's unimpeachable, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it feels like a it was like a mob yesterday wanting to yep. destroy him. It's like, oh, hold on a second, Matt is a Bitcoiner. He's done a lot for Bitcoin. Yep, he's not trying to destroy Bitcoin. He's not asking for a hard fork. No, he's not advocating for poor security. Like he, I mean, all the work he did for trying to have uh, the mining, uh, so the mining and the pools become more decentralized, very important work. And it felt like the mob fucking went for him. Yeah, I, I really feel the the meme of toxic maximalism is become self-reinforcing people are trying to be more toxic which is a ridiculous negative well, it's a race thing to the to bottom do. yeah it's a, it's a race to the bottom you know um, and something i've always tried to be is a non-toxic maximalist i am a bitcoin maximalist i you know i believe 
money forms a natural monopoly within an economy and Bitcoin is the best form of money to do that. So I do not see any long-term value in altcoins. I do see value in experimenting and playing with things. I, I'm not interested in it personally, but if somebody wants to go off and create some kind of random shitcoin which does something interesting technologically, I'll look at the tech and I'll say, yeah, that's interesting. Um, maybe we can use it in Bitcoin, maybe we can't. Um, but yeah, that's what really interests me is Bitcoin. Um, I'm not interested in any of those uh, shitcoins. Um, so I am a maximalist, but non-toxic maximalist. I do not see any value in pushing people down and yelling at them and screaming at them. You know, if I want to bring people into Bitcoin, I will educate. I will teach. I will help them understand why Bitcoin is a good thing and also why I view, um, you know, why I have this opinion that money forms a natural monopoly. You know, it's not an obvious thing. Um, you know, maybe people, some people say, oh yeah, there can be a bunch of different monies. You know, I know um, Andreas Antonopoulos is of that opinion. Um, and, you know, he's one of the people I respect most in this space. And I disagree with him on that, you know, very fundamental thing. We well, should banish him from your life and <laughs> call him names. And um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I kind of agree. I think long, I'm a long-term Bitcoin maximalist in that I believe in the long-term money is a natural monopoly. But I think in the short term, people have decisions to make. They've got to like uh, use certain technologies, uh, monetary technologies to survive. And yep. you know, maybe they're going to not use one that I agree with, but you know, that's fine. That's why them. And I absolutely do agree. There's plenty of people out there creating useless experiments that shouldn't be done. And people are getting ripped off and losing money. And you know, yep. I think we should be aware of that. But I also hope that I'm kind of hoping there's going to be a change in the kind of discussion around this. Cause I'm, it's kind of getting a bit tiring now. It's like yesterday yep. when I saw the Matt stuff, I was like, Oh God. Yeah. Here we go again, fuck's sake. And then, then there's going to be a Twitter spaces on it and six people are going to talk about Maxis like this and, you know, this, and, you know, there's a criticism Maxis is that they're mean. I, I don't think the, I, I think there's a more important criticism. It's not that they're mean. It's like how much time and energy is being wasted and how effective is this? Like yeah. maximalism is important. You know, we had a, um, a Bitcoin meetup at our football club the other day. 60 people turn up. It was great. And we only talked about Bitcoin. Yeah, people ask about altcoins. We're like, probably should avoid them. We're here. We're focused on Bitcoin, and and that was great. We went you know, yelling at anyone, and I wonder how much time people are wasting discussing maximalism, discussing what somebody else is doing, and having a Twitter space on there, and spending it all day arguing when actually they're probably not. They're probably just reinforcing their beliefs and a few friends' beliefs. Yeah. And actually, they could be using that time to be out there educating and doing other things. Yep. So they're, they're reinforcing an echo chamber. They're wasting time. It's 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 completely unproductive. Um, it's potentially even negative in that some other people could see it and say, I don't want to be a part of this crap. And well, that does happen. Yeah, and stay away from Bitcoin because of what they're seeing there. So yeah. Tom from my football club, me and Danny, we went down the pub with him the other day because Tom always talks to me about this. And he just says, I'm totally put off Bitcoin. I'm just put off it. I just yeah. cannot, because he sees all the shit that uh, gets flung my way, and he's like, "I've just, I just, I don't want anything to do with this." And that's what I, I just want to have that. Even trying to have this conversation, you know, even trying to have that with some of these people, it's not possible because I don't know what the criticism will be because it will be. But I just want to reframe and say, "Look, hey, listen, your goal is Bitcoin expansion, Bitcoin adoption. Mine is the same." Um, your tactics are A, B, and C. Can we just evaluate whether they're productive or not? I'll do it with mine. Yeah. Let's evaluate your your tactics because if you're being unproductive, should should we rethink it? That's what I would hope because it's, it's today. I was like, I wonder who we're canceling today, who we're we yelling at today, and what we're we yelling at them for. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's got a bit much, man. Yeah. I know I've seen you comment on with it. You there. You've gone into a few threads on it recently. I have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think the solution is? I don't think there is an easy solution. I think it's something which will have to sort itself out over time. Um, people get polarized, especially on social media, and it doesn't matter what it is. You know, you go on, um, so I'm in, I'm in a few different kind of Twitter circles, not just Bitcoin. You know, I'm on medical Twitter as well because I have an interest in neuroscience and, you know, I love seeing neuroscience type stuff. So I follow a bunch of neuroscientists um, and there will be polarizing arguments that happen, you know, um, about the most ridiculous of things. Um, there was one, uh, I'm just trying to remember how, recently about um, a particular cranial nerve, whether it forms part of the central nervous system or the peripheral nervous system. And that turned into a fight. Do you have peripheral maximalists? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but, is, do, but I mean, yeah, it, it's, is it as 
Is it very similar to what happens in our community or is it different? So perhaps on medical Twitter, not so much because, you know, it tends to be medical professionals. But um, mm. I, I think you get it in any society. Yeah. Um, I, I grew up in New Zealand where the argument is Ford cars or Holden cars. You know, it's either you're either a Ford person or a Holden person. You cannot be anything else. Um, you know, and if you like Ford, then the Holden people will hate you. And if you like Holden, the Ford people will hate you. Right. So I drove a Mazda. That's yeah. my dad. My dad <laughs> drove a Mazda all the way through. My dad loved yeah. Mazdas. He had like three of them. I've got a Mazda. Mazda. No. Yeah, it's just a it, it's just this silly polarizing thing. It, it, ha- it happens in societies. So you know, and Twitter makes it worse. Social media makes it worse. Yeah. So I don't think there's going to be an easy solution for the Bitcoin world. I think it's something that will disappear over time as we get more people with different viewpoints being expressed. Um, when people can't force their own echo chambers as much, you know, sure. Eventually, you, know, you might get some people who block every single person who isn't 100% aligned with them. But now they're stuck in their echo chamber and it won't spread as much out of it. Yeah. So the more different viewpoints we have, the less we should see of it. But I don't think it'll ever go away entirely. And I think it's going to be with us for a long time, unfortunately. Yeah, like I said, I almost don't want to criticize the tactics. I almost want to just evaluate and say, is it productive? Yeah. I don't want to argue against toxic maximalism. Maybe it has a benefit that I'm not aware of. Maybe there's times when I've been a little bit toxic and now I'm a total hypocrite. I just want to know, is it productive? Because I I go on Twitter now and it's just like, fight, fight, fight. Oh, is that like again? Really? Like, are we being the most productive we can be? And that's, that's what I care about because I care about people understanding Bitcoin, people being able to use Bitcoin and uh, and expanding the people who get to it and is spending all these hours arguing over this shit coin or this belief or that belief is that is that making us less productive and is that having a negative effect if it is i want to be away from it yeah that's my simple view on it yeah i i think one of the big things there is um often when you get into the discussion about it on twitter people say ah but you you get perceived as a toxic maximalist because of this and this and this and that's changing the discussion we were talking about the toxicity and whether it's useful, not about whether somebody perceives me as being toxic. Like I'm sure somebody could say, ah, Ben, you used the word shitcoin earlier. Yes, I did. And I will continue to use that word. And if somebody wants to call that toxic, okay, they're calling me toxic. Um, mm. But that's not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about these toxic maximalists doing stuff. So, you know, um, you know but also, yeah, fine. We can even have the conversation. there. Is it productive to use the word shitcoin? I don't know. Right now, I don't care that much. I think there are bigger fish to fry. 